There's four of us and only three M&Ms left. Roll your die. Whoever has the odd number is out. I remember the hailstorm. They were the size of D20s and they were on fire. I was pulling out of Paula's Donuts after getting a dozen Maple Bacon Donuts. Maple Bacon Donuts. I was picking up some ribs from Dinosaur Barbecue. And all of a sudden, the skies went black. I was being chased by a horde of zombies through the streets of Allentown. They were fast zombies. Fast zombies? That's not fair. I knew the end of days was upon us. So I holed up in my favorite local game store and I barricaded the doors and windows with D&D 2nd Edition splat books. There were so many of them. Do you remember the QCC? We were so close to that convention center. The tables were alive with the sound of critical hits. The energy drinks would flow like Niagara Falls. And Saturday night, all the tables would be alive with all sorts of games, from Arkham Horror to Zombicide. Pathfinder to Dungeons and Dragons. The fear of eldritch horror and the laughter of Cards Against Humanity. Oh, how I love the musical sounds of the video game room and that open gaming library. And all those painted minis and all those great vendors. They always had great guests. They, they were so cool. They would just hang out and play games with you. It could be that way again. I've got a plan. Hi, Kickstarter. Thank you for last year. Queen City Conquest was one of the top 10 gaming convention projects on the Kickstarter website. Because of your support, we're able to keep doing what we do best. We're going to make it so that Queen City Conquest remains the premier gaming convention in Western New York and make it the place for you to play the games you love, talk about these games with your friends, and maybe even design games if that's what you're into. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's Phil Vecchione, any award-winning author, blogger on the Gnome Stew website, and founder of Encone Designs. He also happened to be one of our special guests way back in the first Queen City Conquest. Oh, hi. Just shining my undies. You know, as you do. You wanted me to talk about what? The QCC? Oh, that thing's coming back? I'm just kidding. The past couple of years, the QCC has been my go-to convention. And not because it's in my hometown of Buffalo, but because the QCC is a welcoming environment. It's where everyone uh, is there to have fun and to play games. In everybody from the convention staff to the convention goers are um, really friendly and fun people. You're going to feel like Norm from Cheers. Now, you younger people are going to just have to look up what that means on YouTube. The size of the convention is great. It's all in one area. You're not going to have to run from one end of the convention to the other to make your games. You're going to be able to get everything you need in one area, and it never feels crowded. There's a lot of scheduled games, and there's a bunch of pickup games. I'm going to the QCC, and I know I'm going to have a lot of fun, and I know you will too. Seriously, you guys are still here? Go back to the narrator. That's right, the end of the world is near. A three-day demonic event of the Queen City Conquest going in an apocalyptic fashion culminating with Cthulhu taking over and coming out of Lake Erie and eating us like a bucket of chicken wings. What? No Cthulhu? He's in Vegas? Oh, I, I got an idea. Thank you. All right, guys, guess what? We don't have Cthulhu, but we have the next best thing, Jane Calvert, a three-time attendee of the Queen City Conquest 
and fantasy flight expert explaining all of the adventures she has had while playing Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, and other fantasy flight games based in the Cthulhu mythos. Last year's Queen City Conquest was definitely the best con year that I've had for running Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror. Uh, no one won a single game, but they all had a blast getting devoured. Um, I ran to Queen City Conquest right after work. I had had a 12 hour day, I was exhausted, and as soon as I got there I had a full table of players, every single one of them thrilled and excited to be devoured by Cthulhu. What can I say? It doesn't get much better than that. Go to Queen City Conquest! It's definitely the only con. I've taught like 40 to 50 people how to play Arkham Horror and Elder Horror, and Queen City Conquest is the only con where I've consistently had full tables. So definitely come out and play. Wasn't that wonderful? I love a good bit of insanity just as much as the next guy. So where was I? Let's talk about what else the convention has to offer. Every year, Queen City Conquest does something to benefit Child's Play. It's a nonprofit that seeks to improve the lives of children in hospitals by supporting and encouraging play. Last year, we did a live auction and raised over $1,000. The live auction this year will be making a comeback. Thanks, Jane, again. So, what else do we got? Besides just the best three days of gaming in Western New York, we have three of the most prolific guests we've ever had the pleasure of bringing to you. Andy Hopp is an award-winning illustrator, author, and game designer. He is the illustrator of the children's books Clifford the Big Red God and Where the Deep Ones Are by Atlas Games, as well as the creator of the Wanderers Guild and the illustrator of dozens of RPG books, card games, and other products. Andy's most well-known creation is the humorous and popular low-life RPG. The game takes place gazillions of years in the future after the vaunted human race has been driven to extinction by countless calamities. The dominant life forms have evolved from cockroaches, Twinkies, and the dregs that survived, while society is based on the misinterpreted archaeological remains of the ancient human race. The new lowlife, The Rise of the Lowly, Cold Rulebook is currently the subject of a successful Kickstarter campaign. Kurt Covert is the owner of Smirk and Dagger Games, a company dedicated to the belief that games are more fun when you stab a friend in the back. As a 12-year veteran in the board game industry, Kurt is the designer of a line of wildly fun backstabby game classics, including Cutthroat Caverns. A graphic artist, promotional marketing professional, and inventor of other licensed toys and games, including Crayola 3D Outdoor Sidewalk Chalk, Kurt knows the ins and outs of both the hobby game and mass market game industries. He will be available to share his insights, knowledge, and experiences in panel discussions to answer your questions, and might even play a game or three. John Wick makes games. He also writes short stories, novels, and screenplays, but mostly he makes games. His name is on games like Legend of the Five Rings, Seventh Sea, Orc World, Houses of the Blooded, and Wicked Fantasy. His Game Master advice column, Play Dirty, has been collected into two volumes. He lives in Phoenix and collects orcs. His website is johnwickpresents.com. I think it's only fitting that we end where we began, by thanking you for our great success last year and for your continued support this year. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks. You're awesome. Thank you, Kickstarter. We couldn't do this without your support. I look forward to seeing you this September 18th through 20th at the Buffalo Niagara Convention Center for Queen City Conquest. You're going to meet all the other survivors of the apocalypse, play some games powered by the dying sun, flee from some zombie hordes, and uh, hopefully see who really runs Barter Town on the other side of the Queen City Thunderdome. I really hope Skynet isn't listening to this. saddened to bring you the news that the scientific community has informed me there is an asteroid ahead for Earth that will be destroying it in about 18 years. However, fortunately we have found our pilot who will fly the shuttle into space with the nukes 
to blow that asteroid up. Uh, would you like to say a few words? I'm gonna blow up that shit real good. And I'm gonna spit up on Daddy too. Thank you, sweetheart. That's so nice of you. Yes. Does, now tell me, did they train you how to do zero gravity in the womb? Yes, I had zero G training in the womb. My mommy got into that big centrifugal thing and I got G-force training as well. It was awful. She threw up and passed out. I did not though, because I am awesome. <laughs>